In the headlines, 11 released victims of Kaduna train attack reunite with their families. INEC promises credible governorship election in Ekiti State. And on the foreign scene, Ethiopia's government sets up committee to negotiate with Tigray rebels. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Ibrahim Youssef. Hello and welcome once again. 11 kidnapped passengers from the March 28 Kaduna train attack who were released last weekend have been reunited with their families. The victims were released following a series of negotiations with the federal government after spending 11 weeks in captivity. Upon their release, they were first taken to Abuja for debriefing and were later brought back to Kaduna on Monday where they were handed over to their families by the military. Meanwhile, bandits have attacked the Shola community in Katsina local government area of Katsina State, abducting eight persons in the process. A resident of the community told Channel's television via telephone that the community was invaded by the terrorists riding on motorcycles in the early hours of Tuesday. Channel's television observed that the community, which is located behind the newly converted Katsina Federal Teaching Hospital, is vulnerable to attack due to its proximity to bandit enclaves. Although the terrorists did not kill or injure anyone of the residents, an eyewitness said that the terrorists when moved from house to house where they were successful in kidnapping six men, one married woman and her two-year-old baby girl. The Katsina State Police Command is, however, yet to comment on the incident as of press time. The Emir of Iloring, Ibrahim Sulu Gambari, has called on retired military officers to come together and offer expertise to the federal government on how to end insecurity. He noted that all parts of the country are witnessing one form of insecurity or the other and believes that the expertise garnered by the retired military men will go a long way in helping the country overcome all challenges. At war already. Don't let anybody deceive for people like us that we are not at war. We are at war. You open your newspaper in the morning or in the radio, how many people are killed? 35 there, 50 there. I see. We are not in the war. War means no rule. There are no rule in the war. They can come and kill you in your bedroom or couple go to your, uh, your, your, your backyard when they want to kill you. But the issue is they come to kill you. They have come in to kill you now. The North East has been almost battered and, and captured. The North West is the return. Now, the South, South, the South East and everything will be... Uh, the North Central, of course, is uh, one way or the other, down here, half, half, half laid down. He knows why he said that. The retired military generals or retired military officers should come together. And based on the situation today in this country, these are experienced Nigerians, okay, that have served in different capacities. And uh, anything to do with security, the military people are exposed to it. So truly, uh, and uh, there are efforts, okay, in coming together as retired military people. And not just there, but to do what, to advise these young ones that are still in service. Well, they, as we are retired, you know, we are not exposed to arms and even personnel. But the advice we can give today is to the young ones that are still in service and even to government also. And uh, it all depends what the advice we give and we just hope they will take those advices and put it into practice. And still on matters of security, the Inspector General of Police, Usman Ali Baba, has ordered the arrest and probe of the policeman attached to popular musician Burner Boy, who was involved in the shooting at Club Cubana, Victoria Island. In a statement through the force PRO, CSP Olumuiwa Adejobi, it said the police personnel identified in the shooting incident at Club Cubana, Victoria Island, Lagos, on Wednesday, June 8, 2022, has been taken into custody and been investigated for involvement in the incident. 
And now to politics, where the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says it is ready to conduct a credible governorship election in Ekiti State. Speaking on Tuesday, Chairman of INEC's Information and Voter Education Committee, Festus Okoye, said the Commission will deploy the bimodal voter accreditation system for the June 18th election. Okoye said INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu was already in southwestern state. He said stakeholders will sign the peace accord on Wednesday. Meanwhile, the National Peace Committee has appealed to residents of Ekiti to choose peace over violence in the coming governorship election in the state. Chairman of the committee and former head of state General Abdus Salami Abubakar made the appeal in a statement barely a week to the election day. He urged people to come out without fear, but with hope to exercise their franchise and vote to deepen the democratic process in the state. He urged everyone taking part in the election to follow due process, conduct themselves with civility and patriotism, and ensure they do not take laws into their hands, no matter the grievances they may hold against individuals and other stakeholders in the polls. Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria of the National Assembly has suspended its strike. The workers who embarked on the strike to press home some demands of payment of some allowances crippled activities at the National Assembly for one week. Addressing the workers at the entrance of the National Assembly on Tuesday, Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria spokesperson Muhammad Usman said they agreed to suspend the strike following some agreements reached with the National Assembly. The workers, however, threatened to resume the strike action if agreements reached were not implemented by the end of July. Meanwhile, the federal government has continued its negotiations with ASU as the strike enters its fourth month. Talks between both parties were held on Monday at the Nigeria University's Commission in Abuja. However, the meeting ended without a concrete agreement. They plan to reconvene within 24 hours to consider a draft agreement. ASU embarked on a nationwide strike on February 14th over the adoption of the Integrated Personnel Payroll Information System, IPPIS, as the payment system in the university sector. Residents of Warakum community in Basa local government area of Plateau State are decrying cases where suspected ritualists exhume corpses for ritual purposes. The residents, while expressing worry over the development, described the situation as unfortunate. Adu Musa completes the story. The community, through its leader, Aminu Babeo, explained that when a corpse is exhumed, some body parts will be removed, and in other cases, the graves will be dark and something inserted inside the grave for ritual purposes. He is worried that such could result in a calamity that will have consequences on the generality of the community. Yes, it is true. It is happening. We have been experiencing such activities in our community cemetery. It has happened about four times now. Some months back, when a woman was buried, 
that very night, her corpse was exhumed and certain parts of her body were removed. A few weeks later, another corpse of a teenage boy was exhumed and some parts cut. So, this has been a source of concern for us. Muhammad Arab, a resident of the area, also expressed worry over the incident. He said, it is sad to see such activities happening in the area. We are not happy with what is happening here. We are praying to Allah to get us out of this problem. It is very, very unfortunate. We are calling on those behind these devilish acts to stop, as this will not bring meaningful development to them and the community as a whole. Baboyo, however, call on members of the community to be vigilant and report any suspicious movement in the area. Adam Musa, Trust TV News, Joss. A Kano State High Court has adjourned judgment until July 28th in the trial of Tanku Abdul Malik and two others accused of killing late Hanifa Abu Bakr. Prosecution and defense teams adopted their written addresses before the court on Tuesday. Prosecution Lamid Dosura Dinki asked the court to sentence the defendants Tanku Abdul Malik and his co accused to death. Trial Judge Justice Usman Abba adjourned the matter for judgment. We have today adopted our final written addresses in respect of this case and uh, I have made an application before this honorable court that uh, under order 31 rule 4 that uh, the court should allow me to make a comment a certain adumbration on uh, the charge level against the second defendant uh, who is uh, Isiaku Hashimu in respect of the charge on him. And uh, the court allows me and I drew the attention of the court that uh, the charge with the uh, charge against him under section 277 is similar to that of under 274 for a gravy which was alleged, uh, which was leveled against the uh, first defendant, that is Abdul Malik Tanko, and they carry the same punishment, that is the uh, death penalty. And therefore we urge the courts to pass this sentence on all the defendants the Abdul Malik Tanko and uh, Isia Kwashimu as well as Fatima Jibrin because uh, the punishment of those sections under which they were all charged carry the same punishment of death penalty. That is what we owe this honorable court and the court has adjourned the matter to, to the 28th of July 2022. You're watching Trust TV News Update. Still to come, on the news, how graduate becomes employer recycling waste. Details of this and more after the break. Do stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on Trust TV News Update. Now another look at our top stories. 11 released victims of Kaduna train attack reunite with their families. And INEG promises credible governorship elections in Ekiti. Moving on to other news now. Farmers in Dumun Ganjua local government area of Bochi state say despite agriculture being the best way to economic prosperity, Government is not doing well in dispensing fertilizers to them. The farmers say the commodity has not been made available to them in good time and at subsidized rates, despite the fact that the farming season has begun. 
The farmers spoke to Trust TV's Adamu Imam, who filed in this report. The major occupation in Dumun community in Ganjua local government area is farming. However, for many years now, farmers here have been deprived by the federal and the state government of fertilizer or any farm implements. There has been virtually no agricultural intervention to boost their productivity. If the government can help us with farm tools, we will be happy for us. Farming is a source of livelihood. But right now, the situation is so pathetic. Therefore, fertilizer and agrochemicals loans will boost our morale in the community. Women cut across those communities are not left out. Despite dispatching their energy, scratching out a living through farming, they have not had access to agricultural loans. We can't afford fertilizer. That's why we usually plant granots and the other simple crops. We understand that nothing good comes easy, but we still need agric loans that will help women here. Babolu, a seasoned farmer, has been in the business for over a decade. He challenged some policies of the government in agriculture. At every farming season, he says, farmers are fed with the same excuses on sales and distribution of fertilizer. Government should please own path properly. Make sure that these farm inputs get to the hands of the farmer, not to the middleman. Government have to block all these middlemen. The, the, the fertilizer should get straight to the hands of the farmers. Despite the much vented agricultural revolution of the Buhari administration, these farmers are yet to see the benefit. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. A 35-year-old graduate of international relations, Usman Bakau in Adamawa, has taken to plastic waste recycling business in order to avoid unemployment. Bakau says has not only beat unemployment, but has become an employer of over 60 youth. He is optimistic that with the necessary support, plastic recycling business will help reduce an appreciating number of unemployed youth. The report. Plastic pollution has become one of the most present environmental issues as rapidly increasing production of disposable plastic products is almost overwhelming the world's ability to handle. Just 9% of plastic waste ever created has been recycled, researchers estimate. This plastic recycling business in Adamawa has faced a series of challenges ranging from lack of support from appropriate channels as well as stigmatization of those involved in it. However, these challenges, according to Usman Bakau, are not discouraging them from using the trade to assist the government reduce unemployment. You are developing the society, cleaning the society, giving opportunities to those who have no privileges. Those who are less privileged, living in one dollar, we're complaining Nigeria, have a lot of in, or, or, or unemployed, uh, you know, uh, youth, young men and women. So by engaging all these who have the, you know, who have been already in, in another field, supporting this program or this uh, particular business, it will support and boost the economy of Nigeria by the grace of God. It's no issue of gender, you know, uh, females are doing it. So even housewives now gathering plastics, they know the problem. And uh, it gives them value. He further called on government at all levels to assist them with more than equipment to enable them to continue adding to the economy of the state and nation at large. I believe if there is support of government, any organization, I think it will really support them, their business also. Can one buy? Even we can create cups, coolers that our children, young men and women go into school, baskets as we're carrying, we produce here in Adamawa. People from Lagos can come and buy. Why we don't have outside income was we cannot produce, we only can buy what we can consume. Speaking on the stigmatization of members, Chairman Association of Scrap and Waste Dealers Association of Nigeria, Adamawa Chapter, Dalai Ismail, explained that the association is doing everything possible to make people come to terms with the fact that it is a legitimate business. <laughs> Actually, our trade is one of the most challenging ones, both from government as well as some people. However, 
We are currently taking some measures to see that people understand its impact economically. But as I rightly put out earlier, we cannot achieve that along without the government support. Operators of the waste plastic recycling business say with support from government, they will be able to contribute to the growth of the GDP of Nigeria. From Yola, Silas Lowen, Trust TV News. The Central Bank of Nigeria has announced plans to introduce an unstructured supplementary service data, USSD code, to improve the adoption of its e-Naira. Kingsley Obiora, CBN Deputy Governor, said this at the International Monetary Fund Africa Department Speaker Series held virtually. The discussion, moderated by Abese Selassie, Director of IMF's Africa Department, was titled Central Bank Digital Currency and Private Digital Payments in Kenya and Nigeria, Challenges and Opportunities for Sub-Saharan Africa. Obiora said the barrier to entry on the CBDC platform was low, which made it possible for everyone with a bank verification number, BVN, to join the Enara platform in a few minutes. Now look at the foreign scene where Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed says his government has formed a committee to negotiate with Northern Tigray region's forces. Abiy told Parliament on Tuesday that negotiation needs a lot of work and the committee is tasked with coming up with best possible ways to conduct talks with Tigray rebels. Deputy Prime Minister Demeke Makonnen is leading the committee, which has between 10 to 15 days to work on finer details of what will be negotiated. Fighting erupted in Tigray in November 2020 and spilled over to neighboring regions of Afar and Amhara last year. But it has eased since the federal government declared a unilateral humanitarian corridor in March. And Saudi Arabia has lifted a mask mandate for indoor spaces, even as COVID-19 infection numbers steadily climb past 1,000 new cases a day after reaching double-digit lows just a few months ago. Monday's move comes as the kingdom prepares to welcome around 850,000 pilgrims from abroad to participate in the annual Hajj pilgrimage. And now to sports, where former Manchester City captain Vincent Company has been appointed as the new manager of Burnley. The 36-year-old Belgian who left his club in Anderlecht as Anderlecht head coach last month said he was excited by the challenge. He replaced Mike Jackson, who replaced Sean Dyche in April, but could not save the club from relegation to the second-tier championship. The senior Nigerian national team, the Super Eagles, defeated Sao Tome and Principe 10-0 at Adraf Stadium, Agadir, in Morocco. Four goals from Victor Osimen, a brace from Terem Mofi, made it six, while Moses Simon and Egenekaro Etebo, uh, Demola Lukman and Emmanuel Dennis all scored a goal each to make it ten unreplied goals. Nigeria currently tops Group A with six points and 12 goals. And with that, we wrap up Trust TV News Update for this hour. For more news, you can subscribe to watch us live on YouTube and, of course, follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Thanks for watching.